Now, Majid Nawaz, the Lib Dem PPC, that's a prospective parliamentary candidate for Hampstead and Kilburn, it's a North London constituency. He's also founder of the anti-extremist think tank Quillam Foundation. He's found himself at the centre of a controversy after tweeting a cartoon featuring Jesus and Mohammed. There's been a petition calling for him to be deselected. But much more seriously, he's faced a campaign of online abuse, including death threats. Shortly before his offending tweet, he appeared on The Big Question to debate people's right to wear T-shirts with the cartoons on them. However, when you do wear something that threatens our own religion and our own right, that should be a concern for not only Muslims but for everyone else because, like you're saying, human rights is very important to us. When you do threaten our religion, we're not sitting here wearing a hijab mocking you well, in any way. That's just a cartoon of a man with a beard. It's not really Mohammed. Nicky, I'm a Muslim. That T-shirt doesn't threaten me. I'm, I'm a Muslim. That T-shirt doesn't threaten me whatsoever. It doesn't threaten my God. It doesn't threaten my faith. It doesn't threaten the Quran. It doesn't threaten any aspect of my religion. I do not feel threatened by these gentlemen wearing that T-shirt. Now, Majid uh, Nawaz himself isn't here to talk to us. He told us he's been advised by the police not to come on the show. That's how serious it's become. Mohammed Shafiq is a member of the Liberal Democrats' ethnic minority group. He's calling for Nawaz's deselection. Kenan Malik, he writes about multiculturalism and free speech. He's with us in London. Uh, Mohammed Shafiq, let me go to you first. I now, a, a prospective Lib Dem candidate tweets a link to the cartoon doesn't endorse it, doesn't show the cartoon, but just says he doesn't find it insulting, and you want to get rid of him? Well, I think it's important to, <coughs> excuse me, to recognise that uh, where Majid Nawaz has the right to uh, tweet that cartoon and tweet the link to that offensive website, equally Muslims have the right to challenge that. Uh, so freedom of speech can't be selective. It can't be he has the right to uh, tweet that original cartoon and we don't have the right to uh, re respond. You know, over the last few days, Andrew, I've received death threats. I've received racist abuse um, and I, I've received a lot of hate from people who uh, support Majid Nawaz's stance. I'm not going to blame Majid Nawaz for that stance. I think what we're, where we are now is that the Liberal Democrats recognise that this is a very serious issue and that potentially there are a number of seats where there's a strong Muslim presence, including Majid Nawaz's own seat, where we could suffer. And therefore it's right that the party looks at this in, in, in a serious way. We're negotiating and discussing this with the party. And I believe the party is absolutely right that it recognises that the rights and respect... It's a link to a cartoon. The rights and, what, the rights, right, what, the rights what way of could you call yourself a liberal? The, when, the you, of, when you want to hang out to dry somebody Andrew, who simply publishes a, a link to, to a website. Andrew, Andrew Neil, you have to recognise that where there is freedom of speech for that individual to express his views, when that individual is a member of parli uh, sorry, is a, is a parliamentary candidate standing in an election, then he's got to behave in a more responsible way. Now, that's my view. And I think what we've got to do here is we've got to allow those discussions between ourselves and the Liberal Democrats to, to, com to be yeah, completed. But it's not just and discussions. Outcome, it's not it, just an discussions. Out outcome. Can, let me quote what you put on Twitter yourself. You said, we will notify all Muslim organisations in the UK of his despicable behaviour. You just said you weren't criticising him. You call it despicable. You will also notify Islamic countries. You're organising a lynch mob, aren't you? I think that's quite offensive of you to suggest that, Andrew Neil. I've spent the past few days, and you, you can't link anything to me that says I've advocated violence. This is about freedom of speech. Why are you this notifying is, other Islamic this is, countries? This is about freedom of speech, and this is about the Muslims having the right What's to defend themselves. What's it got to do with other Islamic countries? Well, Andrew, if we're going to have a discussion here, it would help if you let me actually answer your questions without constantly interrupting me. Well, what's the answer? We, well, if you, if you let me answer, I'll answer. The, the issue here is quite simple, that a parliamentary candidate who represents the Liberal Democrats has, has tweeted a cartoon which is offensive to Muslims. There's a petition out there, there's a number of people who find that offensive. And I think we've made some progress over the last few days. Majid Nawaz has expressed his regret uh, tweeting this cartoon. And there are discussions happening between the Liberal Democrats and the members of the I, Muslim community. I'll ask now, you I'm again not going to give you the chance I'm not to answer. Going to, What's I'm it not got going to, negotiate. to do with Andrew, other I'm not, Islamic Andrew, countries? I'm not going to negotiate through the, uh, with the Liberal Democrats through, through the daily politics or through you, Andrew. I'm going to allow the Liberal Democrats and ourselves to have those discussions. Let me it's ask important. you again and try it's, and answer the question, if you do our viewers the favour. What's it got to do with other Islamic countries? It affects every Muslim around the world when a cartoon depicts the Holy Prophet. Let me just tell you, set out, if you allow me a few seconds to say something without interrupting me. 
we as Muslims find a depicting of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, uh, forbidden. It's not acceptable in any shape or any form. And that's offensive to Muslims here in this country and around the world. And, you know, my uh, language that I've used over the past few days has been very clear that we, you know, uh, Andrew, we're engaged in a political process. You were telling the politicians in this country, tell us that Muslims have to engage in the political process. We've engaged in the political process. We've done a petition. We've wrought to the Liberal Democrats, and right. we've done that through peacefully. And for anybody to suggest that I'm advocating violence or I'm inciting violence, inciting murder is deeply offensive. And, and, but it's been and, the consequence of your tweet. He's already been threatened with just, beheading. And, and, and so Andrew, let me bring in Ken and Malik. No, no, you've had your say. I'm bringing in Ken and Malik now. What do you say to our guests in the other studio? Some Muslims are offended by the cartoons. Others are not. Much are otherwise, you? I'm not. I'm not. A, I don't consider myself a Muslim, so, so it's no point in asking me that question. Um, some are. Some aren't. This is not a question of offence to a community. It is about a debate within a community, and in fact, within communities, because there are many Muslim communities. The reason we imagine that it is about offence to a community. It's only because those who see it as offensive are seen as the authentic voice of the Muslim community. It's about time. We saw this not as an offence to a community, but an open debate within that community, which we should have. The trouble with seeing uh, uh, only the critics, uh, only those who see it as offensive, as the authentic voice of the Muslim community, is that that's the EDL view. That's the racist view. Uh, we should be challenging that idea that all Muslims are offended by such cartoons, that all Muslims want to I, ban such things. We should, be, we, should be, we should be uh, uh, confronting that and putting forward a liberal uh, view of what uh, the Muslim communities are, communities are like, rather than uh, playing along with a racist view of the Muslim community. Mohammed Shafiq. I mean, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that all Muslims are offended by that. I'm saying a significant number of people who've signed that petition are offended by it. And they want to express their democratic right. On the one hand, you talk about freedom of speech for the rest of society to tweet offensive cartoons against Muslims and Christians. And then you say to us, oh, you can't have the right to be offended. We want to be uh, constructive and we have been constructive. And I want to pay tribute to the Liberal Democrats for the way they've, they've dealt with this in the last uh, 24 hours. We're talking to them. We want to see a positive outcome. And to be fair to Majid Nawaz, He's already recognised uh, his mistake and his regret. Has he? And this is this has been hijacked. This whole debate, I'm, I'm, this I'm whole this whole thing, for, this whole I'm thing has been hijacked. For, uh, this is being hijacked. To have their this, own petition. Right, well, let, let him reply. This is, this I'm is, quite happy. No, you've had your say. Let him reply. I'm, I'm quite critics to say we are offended by it. Um, that's part of free speech. Seems to me there's but, another but lot I of want, people offended want, by almost everything these uh, days. Exactly. This if. If we ban things or prohibit things uh, that uh, offend some group or another, wrong. there is very little we could say to each other. For example, the petition, it opens with the, uh, with the phrase of Jesus as a prophet. Now, most Christians would find that deeply offensive mm. because for them, Jesus is the a, is a son, son of God. Of God. Um, are we going to say that the, the petition should be removed because it is offensive to, to, some, Muslim, no. uh, to some Christians? It it's, plays... Populist politicians like Hert Wilder in Holland, oh. he wants to ban the Quran on the grounds that it is offensive and hate speech. Oh. Presumably, Mohammed Shafiq doesn't agree with that. But what is fundamentally yeah, different? I think we can assume between, that safely. But what is fundamentally different between saying uh, uh, that uh, 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 some cartoons should not be shown because they are offensive to Muslims, and saying the I... Quran should not be uh, allowed because it's offensive to Christians? The point I... is that we need free speech, and that's free speech for everyone, not for a particular group of people. Which is what I, I mean, I think people will be surprised that you're a Liberal Democrat, because the Liberal Democrats, their, their ideological basis is John Stuart Mill in the 19th century. He'd be turning his grave at what you're suggesting. Andrew Neil, the Liberal Democrats are a broad church, and within that Well, they must church, be very broad. Within that broad church, there are a number of people like myself who believe that freedom of speech becomes a responsibility. And, uh, you know, we as people, as, uh, as people who are engaged in this debate have to behave in a responsible way. But the idea that you start to restrict the right of Muslims to be offended by this is deeply patronising. And over the last few days, what we've seen, we've seen ex-Muslims, we've seen humanists, we've seen atheists, we've seen the EDL and we've seen the BMP supporting the stance of, of, the, of, of my colleague in the studio. So I, I'm not going to take any lectures about freedom of speech from people okay. who have an agenda to Let's hate Islam Muslims. Let's just hear from... Uh, we seem to be moving into a world 
where witch finder generals pop up every day now, offended at something that somebody's tweeted. I find the idea that you have a right to take offence at someone else expressing a view quite baffling. I'm a committed Christian, but I don't take offence at the idea that lots of other people disagree with me the whole time. And it also seems, personally, like too much of an effort to get annoyed that someone else disagrees with you. You might as well just get on with the more important things in life than trying to get someone silenced, which is essentially what this is. It's trying to get him deselected and therefore silenced, saying his views are less valid and bullying him into not expressing his opinion. Perhaps he does regret saying it because of the death threats he's received, but that's no reason to stop him from saying it. But, Steve Richard, we are in a society now where if you are offended, you then expect the right to close the offence down as opposed to be offended and move on. Yeah, I'll just have one qualification in the sense that when you are a candidate for a party, are you tweeting as an individual free to say whatever you want or are you there on behalf of a party? I mean, I think candidates do need to be a point. bit more careful than the rest of us when they're tweeting. I mean, I'm not... I'm not sort but of, he simply tweeted to a link know, and said, but, but, I don't but find all it I'm saying is, self-evidently, from what you've just heard, it's, it's, it's caused a furore. Now, I'm not justifying the furore, but I think as candidates and as politicians, they, they have to be perhaps a bit more careful than, than, than the rest of us. What's wrong with tweeting to a link saying you don't find it I don't, offensive? Personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with even it Even as a all. candidate? Um, even as a candidate. But okay. the, the fact that it's caused this round, and poor old right. Nick Clegg, having dealt with the far, uh, the uh, Renard event... Well, I think he needs this like a hole in exactly. there. Exactly, really when you heard do. about this. Uh, uh, but I'm going but, to, because but self-evidently it's caused a, a row. Ken and Malik, I'll give you the final word because uh, Mohammed Shafiq has had a, a very good say. Your final word to close this debate. What does it say about a party or a society if a, a, a political candidate is not allowed to offend anyone or even to say, mm. I am not offended by <laughs> this cartoon or this book? And what does it say about a party or a society if a small group from within a particular community is allowed to dictate what is or is not acceptable uh, to be said about that community. All right, we'll, we'll leave it there. I thank you both for taking part in a spirited debate.